Peter, you should now have control. Yes, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Can anybody else hear him? No, everybody's on mute. We're just alone. There's nobody here but us chicken. It's just between us two, eh? Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's just us two uh, this time. Uh, uh, okay, okay. You, but no one else can reply. Remember that. You are talking <laughs> into the ether. That is true. Right, well, I can heckle hello, someone else can. Hello, Ether. I'm Pete, and this is a, talk, a trick I use a lot. Um, it's a story about a bug that isn't a bug, and a hack that isn't a hack. And spoiler alert, because the hack that isn't a hack defeats the bug that isn't a bug. So here is an extremely brief biologi bi bi biological, biographical segment. This is me, that's my CV. Anyone who wants to read it can press pause if they're watching through YouTube. This is my context. Um, I am a SQL Server developer who works in the recruitment industry, work in an SME of 150 companies, but that 150 people, and that's five companies internationally, but four circle Venn diagrams look horrible, so I didn't bother showing that. Um, I'm here, it's a lonely place. I am the recruitment guy who's done well over 10,000 hours of SQL Server development. Now, I started off as an analyst, and that means that in a previous life, I did loads and loads of VBA. And VBA had a feature that I really wished had been in SQL Server 2000. Also wished it had been in SQL Server 2005. SQL Server 2008. Nope. 2012. Nope. 2014. Nope. I had big hopes for SQL 2016. This one thing, this one thing would be fixed. It wasn't. And that one thing is this. This is a very, very standard scalar function and it takes in two variables. The second of those variables is optional as exemplified by that equal sign, which means that I, in my VBA world, would have been able to run this and got, get the answer zero. Now, there's a little clue here with the squiggly red line underneath it, but when I run this function, I get an insufficient number of arguments were supplied for the procedure or function. But 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 they were because it was optional. I put the equal sign in. I told it what I wanted if I didn't if I didn't provide another variable. And it's still like that. First thing I did when I got 2016 was this. And here, so that is the bug that um, a lot of people too isn't a bug. And this is the hack that is perfectly permissible. So in my book, it's really a hack. This is a function that tells the truth. Now you'll see it's got only one variable in the top line, but I have snuck in a little optional variable down there. And you see that the variable is internal to the function. I'm going to show you how to call that variable from externally to the function. So this function tells the truth. I've just given it a seven, and that will return me a zero because I've got my optional variable that I've set to zero, and it's killing it. And the trick is in this red box here. Um, if you look in the middle line, you'll see I'm doing something. I'm using something called context info. Um, based on my attendance of many lectures and my speaking at a number of events, most people don't actually use context info, which is a shame because it's great. In particular, it gets me around this problem. So here's a procedure for, that I'm going to put around the function that tells the truth. Note well that the optional variable is present in my procedure. And I've also got context info in there. It's this time it's a third line down, and we'll get to that in a minute. So here's what happened when I ran my procedure. I did a 7, then a 1. It returned me a 7. I then get provided a 7, then a 0, and it returned me a 0. But then, wonderfully, I provided a 7 and nothing, and it was able to guess that my optional parameter was a zero. And this is how it works. I have a procedure here that calls my function. Within that procedure, I set some context info. That context info is then available with, throughout my session. I'm able to call on it, therefore, within the function. And in doing so, I can pass a variable into my function that, without changing the number of variables that my function calls upon. One minute, Mel. Uh, one minute, Peter. Well, that, is, that I won't need one minute. I'll need approximately ten seconds. If, uh, you can tweet me. You can email me. You can read me. Um, 
people find me vaguely useful, and you can utilize me now by asking me questions. I think that's a wrap then, guys. Thanks to our presenters for uh, spending their hard-earned lunch times with us, um, and I hope everybody enjoyed watching it, and we'll see you next month for a whole new set of sessions. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Thanks, bye.